Hello and welcome! At the first week of the Grand Naval Battles events has ended, the results are in, the winners have been decided, and uh, here we have Cutkiller in his Montana, who got the highest base experience in a battleship, which is uh, 3430 experience in the Montana. It's actually a bit surprising, because this is by far the lowest result out of any of the classes, but then again I got very few uh, submissions for battleships actually. Which, you know, is a bit sad, but that's okay. Uh, Cutkiller definitely deserves the win, because he did submit the highest experience match. And it's a pretty good one at that. Anyways, um... Week 2 of Grand Naval Battles events are going on. I am hosting uh, 4 prizes for a guide contest for each of the ship classes. Uh, and uh, 1 for the replay for the best match in a tier 5 or lower ship. Anyways, if you want to know more, then click on the link in the description of the video to go to the forum thread. So, moving on, uh, the hero of this match is Cutkiller, and he is in the tier 10 US battleship, the Mighty Montana. This match is on the map Tears of the Desert, and um, it's domination mode, and surprisingly, there are no Yamatas around, only Montanas and some other ships. Quite many destroyers, and uh, even a Moskva, I think. Yep. Anyways, um, his first shot is on the enemy Montana to, uh, you know, try to measure up against uh, the competition, I guess. Uh, and he was immediately set on fire. The ship is on fire. Unfortunately, because it's cast from replays, you know, it's not the best looking one. Um, he headed towards sea, as people on the side of the map with these spawns often do, and his initial salvo was rather poor. By the way, if you didn't notice, he doesn't actually have camo on his ship, which is incredibly surprising to me. But anyways, um, heading towards sea, there are many enemies. I think that Moskva might be one of the better ships to shoot at. However, she's a bit too far away compared to this Tirpitz and... Uh, you know, Montana, but the Moskva is a rather dangerous threat, so I think it's a good uh, thing to try to shoot at. Um, the team did get C, which is a good thing, but it seems there's an enemy destroyer around that is trying to decap. The ship is on fire. Um, so what Kotkiller tried to do was go into the sea cap and then turn away behind the island, because this means that uh, he can pop out of uh, danger. At least, relative danger, although at this point the question is whether it was really worth it because he has taken so much damage already that it's kinda, you know, you can't really hide behind this island because it, it doesn't keep you completely safe. It might not, you know, um, have you die immediately if you hide behind this island, but you are definitely not completely safe. He has two runaway fires with no damage control party active. Also, it seems that he doesn't even use premium consumables, at least premium uh, damage control party, which I would recommend heavily to do so on a battleship, especially. The reason why the Moskva is a good target is because she is really big and she is a cruiser. And she has a ton of HP, so it's important to try to finish that one off. Two citadel hits and four shell hits. That was a really good salvo on the Moskva. Okay, the next target is either the Zao or the Montana, apparently. Both are good ones. Uh, I think the Zao is a more important target, really. But the island is in the way. I think he could shoot at the Montana, but not at the Zao. And because the Zao is turning away, I imagine that's why he is, uh, you know, uh, decided to shoot the Montana instead. Also, apparently, the buggy thing... Wow! Three Citadel hits! Damn! That's an amazing salvo. The buggy thing is apparently following the camera of the player. And that's when it looks not smooth. But that's okay. We can work around that one. Next salvo is on the Zao. So, 6 kilometers out, and no Citadel hits. Surprising. 11,000 damage though, so it did something. But he was set on fire again, and he is down already 2 heals. Which is um, not very good if you want to have a great match. Yes, he has had 5 Citadel hits already in the 6 minutes. 
that is a very good result. Also, torpedoes incoming. Uh, that is a very good result, but the thing is that, uh, you know, this is a contest for highest base experience. It's uh, dropping down to 8,000 HP with two fires going on, 7,000, 6,000 HP. At uh, 6 minutes and 20 seconds into the match is a bit, uh, you know, um, doesn't lend itself very well to actually winning the contest. But he's still alive, that's all that matters. That means he can still deal a lot of uh, damage and gain a lot of experience. Okay, it seems the choice of target is the Montana, although she is a bit angled. I, I probably would pick the same target because there aren't very many other good targets. The shells weren't, like there wasn't enough lead on these shells and that's why I uh, didn't work out too well. Okay, so, um, the next choice of target, I think it's still the Montana. It's important to finish her off, but the main thing is that uh, Cot Killer needs to move away um, while taking as little damage as possible because he only has 4600 HP. Right now, it seems he's waiting for his guns to turn um, so that he can, and the Montana to die, so that he can pick a target now, which seems to be the Tirpitz this time. Although she is at 20 kilometers, so it might not be a very easy hit. And he was set on fire again. Luckily, he does have a heal running, so he should not die to this fire. That was a um, mediocre salvo. But it was just the back guns, so it's understandable. But yeah, definitely uh, use premium consumables on everything at tier 10. It's just worth it. Repair costs are way too high for you not to use them. And the shot is under the mine. Although the mine is moving away slightly, so it, for me, it would be a difficult shot to do. Let's see how it goes, and yep, he definitely missed this shot as well. Okay, I think uh, still the target of choice would be the Des Moines. He definitely needs to stay essentially at maximum range, because he only has 5000 HP. Almost any ship in this match could take him out, and uh, the enemy has a two ship lead actually. So it's not the greatest. Um, I don't know what to shoot. I, I don't know what I would shoot myself. I think I would pick the Tirpitz as the target of choice. Because... Uh, well, actually, the Tirpitz isn't angled enough. I don't know. I think the good choice would be the mine, after all. Or maybe since actually the Tirpitz is out of range, so I guess there aren't any good targets here. Well, at this point, um, the important thing for his team is to get the, uh, at least the B cap. They can't, they are in no position to take the A cap, but they could take the B cap. The thing with Cutkiller is though that he is uh, so low HP that it's difficult for him to go and contest anything. Because you would lose the fight against almost everything, most likely anyway. So, <clears throat> the important thing is uh, to just, you know, for him to really stay safe. And try to use his range and islands for uh, for his advantage. The Moskva is trying to come into B, along with uh, two other cruisers. Actually, no, three cruisers. So, it's a good cho choice to uh, try to target her. Because again, the Moskva is a gigantic ship. She has essentially as much length as a Yamato. So, if you need a target to hit, Moskva is probably the good choice. The first salvo was, uh, there was not enough lead. So it just didn't work out well enough. But, I mean, it's okay. Because uh, he's not being shot in return. So I think it's fine. He was detected on this salvo, so he could be, you know, enemies could start shooting him, but um, should be okay. Because he is behind an island, more or less, and uh, should be safe. Although, that Iowa could definitely try to shoot her, I think. I mean, the Montana. The next target is the Atago, because, well, it's an Atago. Taking them out of the match is important, their fire damage is ridiculous, and killing them usually isn't too hard. You know, as you Confined just saw, two Citadel hits, so um, that Atago is almost dead in one salvo. 
Hopefully somebody else would finish her off. If not, then uh, Cut Killer needs to do it. Although it would be kind of a waste of a salvo. The next one would be a good... The Mogami would be a next good choice, I think. Especially because it appears the Mogami isn't moving at full speed. I don't know what the hell that was. Another replay bug, I guess. Ooh, and another Citadel hit. And this gave uh, Cut Killer Confederate. And the Moskva is moving away and he died. That's very good news. And at this point, the game is equal, more or less. In terms of ship numbers, at least. I think they have a compositional advantage, though. So, another shot on the Mogami. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Well, three hits, that's okay. Could have been better, but it's okay. I think the next fight is against this Iowa. Uh, Cotkiller has himself uh, properly angled. Which is nose pointed towards the battleship. So that the Iowa couldn't really kill him quickly. And he decides to now show his broadside, or at least try to do a full broadside salvo. What the hell is this? Okay, whatever. Okay. Ooh, very good. First salvo. That That's half the Iowa's HP. Also, what the hell is it? Uh, this Iowa is using the ability which gives him more HP, that Montana was using the ability which gave him more HP. You don't understand, you wouldn't use these abilities normally on uh, battleships. That's a bit weird. Okay, um... And this Iowa... Took another Citadel hit. This time he didn't take half his HP in damage though. But he is down to one fourth, and now Cutkiller does definitely have the advantage in HP. And his positioning is also superior, so I think uh, this Iowa is dead. I really don't see what he can really do at this point. That was a really weird shot. It seemed like his. Uh, you know, there's this bug where your mouse sometimes jumps a little bit. It seemed like it was this bug. Because suddenly, just as he was about to fire. His mouse jumped to the right and that made him miss completely. That that was really odd. But, I mean, it's okay. I have that bug sometimes too and it pisses me off as well. This time though, the sh salvo is on target. But he aimed a bit too high in my opinion. He should have aimed lower. Although uh, maybe his uh, idea was to try to shoot the guns to take him out. But honestly, I doubt it. I think he wanted to citadel him, but, you know, they... Aim was off. He did lose a main turret in return though. That is very surprising, but I think this uh, background salvo should finish the Iowa. Or not actually. Wow! The Iowa is still alive with his uh, 5000 HP. This is a. Uh, I'll be honest, uh, this, sal this fight should have been decided when. Uh, before the Cot Killer. You know, the mouse jumped something to the right at this point. Oh, okay. Somebody kill stole him as well. Jesus, guys. Cut Killer has done 240,000 damage and this is what we have seen. And he still has zero kills. Zero. Wow. Anyways, uh, the next target is this Tirpitz and uh, luckily... Or... I guess not that... Not luckily anymore. At this point they have pretty much won the game. There's only one ship on the enemy team left. And they still have five ships, so this should definitely work out nicely for them. Okay, um, and Tirpitz. This was... Um, it's not the greatest in terms of uh, interest, but a good match regardless. So this was quite a match. I mean, Cutkiller did get 10 Citadel hits and he ended up not dying actually. Even though he went so low HP early on. And I guess that brought a lot of focus on him by the enemy team. Which meant that, you know, they weren't shooting anything else. So this probably gave them a pretty big advantage. Like it's uh, like the miracle of this game was the fact that he survived uh, the assault at the start. Uh, also, sorry that this is so such a low resolution. But these are the images submitted. I guess I can understand it. Which makes this even more impressive because uh, apparently this guy plays uh, on uh, a tiny resolution. Anyways, um, he made 500k credits, which is, you know, bar for the course. 15,000 experience, mostly because of the multipliers, obviously. 
He got fireproof, dreadnought, high caliber, and confederate. And no Kraken unleashed because he got zero kills. Everyone kill stole him in this match for some reason. Anyways, he made 13, 3430 experience, which is the highest battleship result uh, given. The, the friendly Zhao got 6 kills, which is probably where a lot of his uh, kills went. That's okay, I mean, this, this uh, was about uh, experience, not uh, kills. But if you look at the damage one, this is 301,000 damage. This is a this is the type of uh, damage result I have not had in the Montana or any other battleship. I think my only ship class that has um, exceeded or been and been on par with these kinds of results is uh, carriers. So this is this is quite impressive to me because I haven't seen a battleship result like this, especially considering the fact that he still got zero kills. Quite something, and the fact that the, this battle actually only lasted 15 minutes, it wasn't the full 20 minute duration. Quite something. So congratulations, Cutkiller. You should get your 200 diamonds I have um, sent on your name to Wargaming. And um, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and thanks for watching.